Hi everybody, it's Nancy, and today I'm going to be stamping out the multi-step bells from Kitchen Sink Stamps. So if you're not familiar with Kitchen Sink Stamps, they are manufactured here in the United States. Um, they're high quality photopolymer stamps, not the inferior silicone stamps. They do come between two pieces of clear acetate and then they have this color layering guide. I do move my stamps from the clear acetate to the layering guide so I know what goes where. And as always, when you purchase kitchen sink stamps, they do offer free SVG files at the time of purchase. What an SVG file is, is an electronic die cut image that you can use with your Cricut Joy, your Silhouette uh, machines, your brother scan and cut, basically any electronic die cutting system. So they don't sell dies. It's going to save you space. It's going to save you money. And the SVG is free at the time of purchasing the stamp. So when you purchase the stamp, put the SVG in your basket with you and when you check out it will be free if you miss the SVG or you forgot it's a dollar to purchase it later and you have 30 days to download it so as soon as you get it emailed to you to you make sure you create a folder on your computer um, that says kitchen sink stamps SVGs and save it to that folder all right so this stamp set has a couple of different bells so you have a large bell over here and a large bell over here and it's basically a right and a left bell you have a smaller bell here, one, two, three, four, five. You have the rounded bells here, okay? And then you have this ribbon. So you have two ribbons, a ribbon here and a ribbon here, and then some wonderful sayings, gold, joy, peace, jingle, happy silver bells, holidays. So um, happy holidays, silver bells, gold bells, peace, joy. So a lot of fun things here. So what we're going to do is we're going to stamp out each of these bells and see how they look. All right. Now, um, whenever I have brand new photopolymer stamps, besides moving them over to the clear color guide, I also like to stamp in Versamark ink. And what Versamark does is it's a clear watermark ink and it helps to condition my stamps or prime my stamps. That way they will accept ink better. You only have to do that the first time you're stamping them out. And because these are layered stamps, they're going to give us a nice, fun, 3D-looking effect. I am going to be using my stamp positioner. This is a mini Misty. You can use your Tim Holtz or any other stamp positioner that you have. Also included is a layering guide, which is printed, and it tells you how to lay up, layer each layer on top of each other so that it lines up properly. And on their website, on their blog, kitchensinkstamps.com, they actually have color recipes. So you can see how it stamps out with other um, ink companies. And there's a couple of examples on the back here. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to move my clear acetate over there, have my stamps here. And for the larger bells, we're going to start with those. I'm going to use my Altenew inks. Again, use whatever grays you have. I like the Altenew inks because they do come in different shades. So this one is limestone, silverstone, industrial diamond, and pure graphite. So that's what we're going to use today. And This is 1A and 1B, and I believe they are the same stamp. They are just opposite um, directions from each other. And so we're going to put the first layer down. Again, use a little bit of Versamark ink on there before I put the actual color on. And we're going to start with the first gray, which is limestone. Of course, you can use any inks that you have. And usually the first layer is supposed to be the most solid layer. For me, if it comes out a little splotchy, I don't really worry about it too much because it's the first layer, which basically is just, just our alignment guide. And then I do like to clean my stamps immediately once I'm done stamping with them. And if you guys have any kitchen sink stamps and you want to know how to line them up or you're having issues with them, just shoot me an email. It's nancystamps15 at gmail.com. And if I have the stamp set, I will work out a tutorial for you. And if I don't have the stamp set, I will get it. All right, so when you're looking at this set, there is a little um, opening right here. 
on both of the bells. And on the second layer, that same opening is there, see? So we're gonna line up that opening and I'm gonna actually move you down a little closer so you get a better view of that. There we go. So I'm gonna line up that opening. And sometimes when you're stamping these out, the colors are super light on the first layer, so you may not be able to see exactly if you're lined up correctly or not. So you may want to stamp in a different order. You can stamp, um, you know, two, three, and then go back to one, or, or go backwards, four, three, two, one, or um, you don't always have to stamp one, two, three, four, and this gray is extremely light, so I might have to do that on this one. Plus trying not to put my head in the camera. And it usually takes a couple of practices to stamp the layered stamps, but it's like riding a bike. Once you stamp them a couple times, you'll remember how to line them up. Okay, so the second color we're gonna use is Silver Stone. I also wanna let you know that Kitchen Sink Stamps hosts, um, sponsors the Mod Squad Challenge once a month. So you wanna go check that out. It's modsquadchallenge.com. My friend Tracy is the host ambassador for Kitchen Sink Stamps, so um, whatever her challenge is, if you enter that with whatever stamps you have, you could win a gift certificate to Kitchen Sink Stamps. So you'll wanna check that out. There's usually a Kitchen Sink Stamps discount code over there as well. So that's modsquadchallenge.com. Okay, now we're going in with layer three, but you can see that this is starting to line up. And now we can see better through the ink. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So now I have these two open areas here on the bell, and I have two open areas on my stamp here. I wanna line those up as well. They must line up perfectly. Now I wanna make sure that this outer line of the bell is also lined up. So these two open areas and this outer edge. There's also an open area right there. And that's what makes these stamps fun is that layered effect when it's done looks 3D. I mean, it looks like bells are popping off of the page here. Same thing, lining up the two open areas at the bottom, the one in the center and the outer edge of the bell. Little bit of Versamark again. You only have to do that first time you stamp them out. It just helps that stamp to accept the ink a little better. Okay, our third color, silver or gray, is going to be Industrial Diamond. And as these grays start to layer, you'll have that illusion of it being silver with a reflection um, with how detailed these stamps are. All right, starting to get there. I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna do that one again. I, I think we could get a little bit better ink coverage on here. And it's because I'm stamping these out for the first time, the ink doesn't smooth out right away. After you do it a few times, the stamp is seasoned or conditioned and it, ex it smooths out the ink a lot better. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we have layer 4A and 4B. These are five layers on these bells. These will be great, not just for holidays. I know this is kind of looking like a holiday stamp set, but think about weddings, um, graduations, you know, momentous events that you have. 
bells bells are always ringing right so all right so for this layer of the bell I'm lining up the center whoops so our two holes at the bottom are cut out so they're not even there but this one in the center we want that one to remain clear so that it lines up with the the line there so you're gonna line that up and now we really start to get into the details of this bell I'm lining up this whole outer edge there and I'm going to do the same on this side okay again with the Bursamark clear ink and then for this gray we're going to use pure graphite If you're not sure, these little Altenew mini ink pads are nice to try out. Of course, Altenew sells reinkers if you want to purchase reinkers before you go to full size ink pads. It's a good way to try different ink companies out and see if it's something you want to invest in. Look at that already. It's starting to look like ding dong, ding dong. It's looking pretty good. Okay. All right, and then layer five is going to be our last layer, which is the most detailed layer. That's gonna give us our darkest shadows. And again, we're lining up here on this left side for this bell. And on the right side for the other bell right there. For that one, I'm gonna use black ink, which is the VersaFine Claire, and this is a pigment ink. So this one will stick to the stamp just fine. You don't really need the Versamark for that. Just remember that this ink takes an extra second to dry because it's a pigment ink. It sits on top of the paper. So you don't wanna go smearing it with your fingers or rub it, because it will smear. Ta-da! Doesn't that look like two real silver bells. Love that, love the color combination. Okay, that one came off the right, which goes over here, and the left goes over here. All right, let's take a look at the two ribbons that we have. Let me move the gray inks out of the way. And it looks like it's a three layer ribbon. So let me see if I have three colors. Here we go. We have three colors of pink. We have Pink Alicious, Rubellite, and Razzleberry. These are also from Altenew. Okay. So let me see. This also looks like they are opposite end ribbons, which is kind of cool. So if we go like this. Is there a bow? There's no bow in this one, but there are kitchen sink stamp bows that just released that we could put in the middle here. So I'm gonna leave a slight space there. And then what I'll do is cut a bow out of one of my other sets. There's a beautiful country bow set. This one here called Winter Berries. And we can easily put that bow on there and there's another bow which I'll find and show you guys that one but I can easily stamp that cut it out with the matching SVG and put that right on top so I'm gonna put these ribbons let's see here I'm gonna move the ribbons up a little bit just like that and leave a little bit of space and then when I cut my bow I can put it on top there and it will cover up the top of the bells okay so here we go so this is layer one of the two ribbons same thing, gonna go with my Versamark clear ink. Just repeat the process here. And we're gonna start with our lightest color, which is Pinkalicious. Now, if you don't have three or four different color inks, don't fret. A lot of times, if you have a mid-tone color ink, 
you can stamp that color, stamp it off to get a lighter shade, stamp it its regular shade, and then stamp it twice to get a darker shade. So keep that in mind. You don't have to have three or four shades of the same ink. You can oftentimes use what you already have in your stash. All right, that looks pretty good. Also using Versamark the first time will help prevent some of the staining that happens on stamps, um, particularly with red inks. Um, they stain the photopolymer stamps and that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. It's personal preference. Um, but then you'll know the difference because silicone stamps, which are inferior stamps, they usually repel ink and they don't stain and they're much harder to stamp with. But these are high quality photopolymer stamps so these are designed to accept ink. Um, just the first time they tend to beat up and that's because of the processing that the stamps go through. So the first time you use them, uh, they just need to be seasoned or primed. All right, for the ribbon, I'm just lining up my outside edges here. So I can see where I'm online or offline. Oops, move that one a little too much. So as long as you line up the outside edges here, the straight areas here and here, it will line up correctly. So that's pretty easy. called Rubalite. Very pretty hot pink. If you want to try kitchen sink stamps, they have many wonderful layered stamp designs. Many masculine stamps, scenery stamps, very realistic looking stamps. I will have an affiliate link down below if you can help support my channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And the same thing with these Altenew inks. So you can see I was a little bit offline right there, but that's okay. It's really not going to affect anything. And I just use a microfiber cloth to clean my stamps. It doesn't leave any kind of stringy residue behind. Um, it's environmentally better because I can just throw it in the washer when it gets dirty instead of going through baby wipes. And um, I just I just really like using those. Ever since I've gotten, they don't get moldy or smell or get damp like some of the other rags that are out there. So, and you can find them pretty cheap. You can get a whole pack of like six or ten for only a few dollars in the car cleaning section of your of your local. Um, big box store. So like Target or Walmart or something like that. All right. So this is the third layer. And for the third layer, we need to line up this curve in the ribbon, that top curve. Do I have this the wrong way? No, I have it the right way. Nope, I had it the wrong way. Okay, so <laughs> see this light area? So we're lining up the curve and this light area. There's an open space on the stamp that goes on that light area. I had it upside down. We want it to be straight on the top. Okay, so the straight part on the top, this open cutout is on the top. I wanna make sure this is all lined up correctly on this top of the ribbon here. And then this open area is on the light pink of this. And I think this is correct. I'm trying to do this without moving my camera, bumping, bumping my head into it. Okay, so this is the last layer of the ribbon. And the darkest color pink that we have is Razzleberry. Ooh, I like that. Very pretty. Okay. Look at that, doesn't that 
look pretty. Okay, I'm going to move this one out of the way. We'll come back and do the ribbon on this one. Let me show you the small bells. That makes a very easy congratulations card. I mean, for my first time, that's pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that one. That one's pretty good. All right, let me grab another piece of paper here. By the way, I have a little piece of sticky grid back here, which holds my paper on place, and then I just have my magnet to hold my mat in place. So when you're using your Misty, you need to keep your little mouse pad in there because these are photopolymer stamps. Okay, so then the next one we have are these little, like, jingle bells. So let's see if I can do both of these at the same time, although I do think these are in different directions. Like, one is going down so this will be down let's put these over here in the corner and I'll eventually make them oh and we have this bell so we'll have all these little bells in the corner all right now these are kind of a golden combo so we need some yellows and oranges here again I'm going to start with some Bursamark And these are four layers. So, We're going to bring in some, whoa, what happened to the focus? We're going to bring in some Catherine Puller inks here. So I do need to just take a little piece of paper. Here's a trick if you don't know which ones are darkest to lightest. This one is called Chiffon. This is a brand new ink from Catherine Puller. And I'm just going to swatch these out so I can see what order I need to stamp them in. I think that one's darker now. No, I think I'm backwards. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with chiffon, then go to limoncello, then catching rays and tiara. I believe that is the correct order. Just checking my color chart. E no, Catching Rays is darker than Tiara. Okay. Let's try this and see how these look. I think these will look pretty nice. Okay. So I already put my Versamark on there. So for my first layer, I'm going to start with Chiffon. bright yellow. here same thing I'm gonna kind of there's a little white highlight there and oops I'm out of frame 
uh, right there and in this in the center of the bell so I'm going to line up that as best as I can okay there is a small white area on this bell which really isn't going to matter too much when you're lining this up so don't fret that too much and same thing with this one first layer is just there it's just there don't worry too much about the first layer okay, okay so for my second color I'm gonna go with limoncello Okay, Catherine Pooler inks are spongier ink, so you don't need a lot of ink. Just light taps will get you that color. And they do come in little mini ink pads as well as full-size ink pads. And, of course, they do have re-inkers available. Same thing with the highlight and the little open space there. All right. And then for these guys, I think I mixed up the stamps. I think this one goes over here. And this one goes over here. Okay, so there is, I know it's going to be really hard for you guys to see this. There is the top of the bell right here. So there's a circle there. There's a lighter area here and here. And on this one, there is also an open space, which I believe is where the, the holes are in the bell. So I'm going to line up the open space right here with that hole right there as best as I can. that's correct and then this one I want to line up that top center as best as I can so that's where it helps to have photopolymer stamps because you can see through them I think I'm off on this one a little bit oops this one I'm not sure about lining it up. I think I'm off a little bit on the side on this one. This one looks okay, and that one I know looks okay. Okay, let's see how we how we do here. This one just ah. Oh! Let's try that. This is layer three of the bells. There's only four layers. Okay, so for layer three, we're going in with tiara. And again, light, light taps with these ink pads because they're super juicy. This one and this one don't look too bad. I definitely messed up the alignment on this one. So that one I'll have to practice again. And this is how we learn.
Okay, so layer four, I'm gonna use catching rays. That one looks okay. That one looks okay. This one, meh, I could take it or leave it. I really need to work on that one. I definitely messed up something on aligning that one, but you can see how beautiful they are. And you can stamp out multiples of these and then, or cut out SVGs of multiples and then go and stamp them out. And that sometimes helps with the alignment. So that little bell there is going to take a little practice from me, guys. I'm going to have to figure out how that one goes. And then what I do... Oh, I see where I messed up. Okay. Let me see here if I can do this one again. I'm actually... I should start with layer two. That's okay. And this is where this um, color guide comes in handy too, because now I can say, okay, so this is layer two. There's a little tiny white spot there. There's a little open area on the stamp there, but I can actually take the stamp out of the way and I can hold this color guide over it and see how I'm supposed to line it up. So there's a tiny little white spot in there. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves on this little bell. That's what I missed, that second layer. Oh yeah, much better. I already can see that it's lined up correctly. And then once you have that, once you figure out that white spot, that's where the other white spot comes in. So see that little triangular white spot there? See that opening on the stamp right there? See that little triangle? That goes over that. Same opening, same opening in the stamp. Ta-da! That looks better than that one. I just had that second one not lined up. That's pretty cool. And you can see how the colors fade back and blend into each other. That looks really cool. Okay. And so the only other thing to show you guys are the sentiments. I'll stamp all those out so you can see them. Like that all the fonts match. So let's see here. All right, let's see what these look like stamped out.
Oops, that one got crooked. So you have happy holidays, joy and peace, gold bells, silver bells, jingle bells, whatever you want to use there. And the little and symbol. All right, guys, I hope that helps you out if you have this set and you needed a little help lining it up. If you have any questions, post them down below. Again, if you have any kind of kitchen sink stamps, uh, layering stamps that you're having an issue with lining up and would like me to help you out, you can email me at nancystamps, the number 15, at gmail.com. And I will be happy to obtain the stamp set if I don't already have it and stamp and layer these out for you. And I will link down below the products that I used. Again, if you're interested in kitchen sink stamps, they are phenomenal stamps. There is a small learning curve, but again, they come out so beautifully when you stamp them out that they're just totally worth it. And you get the free SVGs and they ship quickly and they are made right here in the United States with clear, high quality photopolymer stamps. Oh, I did want to show you guys the, um, the bow. I almost forgot. All right, so we stamped out this and this, and let me grab the, the two bows that you could use. Okay, guys, I'm back. So the two bows that you could use on this are the uh, multi-step winter berries, or I like this bow better. This is the all year grapevine wreath, and this has a little four layer bow. So I took that bow and stamped it out in the same colors and then cut it out. And again, if you have the matching SVGs, you don't need, you know, any kind of electronic die cutting machine. So Baby Joy, um, Silhouette, Scan and Cut, any of those. And look at that, how that just pops up in the middle there. And now we have this congratulatory card and I can just stamp a beautiful congratulations on there. And I only put glue in the middle so that this pops up a little bit. So once that sets, and then we'll have these beautiful bells and this ribbon, think of that fun. So again, this step is called a multi-step bells. This is from Kitchen Sink Stamps. If you want to get the bows, the bows are on all your grapevine wreath, which gives you this fun wreath that you can put these ribbons on. And then this is like an accent one. This one has um, more of a country ribbon with the gingham style. And then it has these little berries. So this one's called winter berries. But this, these little berries go well with this wreath and these little bows go well with the ribbon on multi-step bells. So lots of fun things you can do. All of their stamp sets coordinate very nicely. Go check them out. The link is down below. I do appreciate you guys using the affiliate link. If you learned something off this video or enjoyed yourself, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye guys.